everyone, so in this video I wanted to talk about digital art again because it's one of my favorite mediums to use and I recently um, learned some more things about it and I kind of, um, I've kind of changed my opinion a little bit on it because I remember uh, when I talked about digital art in previous videos, I said that I don't really use brushes, like I uh, use brushes, but I don't use um, very complicated or textured brushes, like I, I always use the very uh, basic smooth um, hard edge brushes that come with programs or like slightly soft edge ones to do all my painting and everything is very um, like like the brush has no texture to it it's a very digital look but um, recently I've been experimenting and I learned how to actually like make your own brushes and I think it's a really cool thing to experiment with because um, it gives you that that traditional look to the to digital and it's just a lot of fun um, to experiment with it and I wanted to show you um, an easy way to make your own brush and I'm also gonna be talking about some other tips for digital art so like I, I guess sort of like five um, five things five tips um, but I'm gonna start off with uh, making your own brushes and the best thing to do is just get out a bunch of different kinds of media uh, make sure uh, well you don't need to really uh, worry about color so just using like black black and white uh, would be best just so you don't waste your color. Um, and just get up some brushes and some charcoal and Conte and pencil and just start making um, really big marks on uh, on paper. Um, the bigger, the better, I think, because then um, when you scan it, it'll just be a, a higher resolution brush and you can make the brush bigger without it getting too blurry. I really like using gouache brushes. So I'll take out um, some black gouache and dry brush a little bit onto a page, um, do some stippling flick the brush, I love doing um, like splatter brushes. It adds a really nice soft noise to paintings, which I really, really like. And you can actually go into Photoshop. So scan your brushes in, or if you don't have a scanner, take a really, really clean, well-lit photo. Um, bring it into Photoshop. I don't know how to do this on other programs. This is just for Photoshop. I don't really use Photoshop to paint, but this is how you can kind of like isolate your, your brush. So you go into Photoshop, you select your brush, and I think it's edit, define brush, um, and then it just automatically takes the black, removes the white, and it makes your brush for you. And I actually use Procreate um, to do most of my digital art because I have an iPad and I just like to take it with me. It's a really portable way of drawing. So I wanted to incorporate my own brushes into Procreate. And I so what I did is I took the brush I stamped it onto an empty canvas in Photoshop, exported it as just an image, and then I brought it into Procreate under the, uh, like in, in each brush, you can swap out the brush shape and the brush grain. So for most of them, I just made the brush shape my own brush and I made the grain blank. But for the noise one, I made the grain be the noise and I, I made the brush shape a soft brush. So it's like a soft noise brush. I kind of looked at the settings for a different brush and just swapped it out with my own texture. So that's a really cool thing to experiment with because then you kind of feel like the digital art you're making and the brushes you're using is are, are your own and everything you truly created yourself because I always find using other people's brushes, um, especially if it's their own textures, that I'm kind of like using someone else's um, art in my own art sort of thing. I know it's not really, that's not really what you're doing, but just having your own brushes that you made yourself um, just makes your art feel a little more authentic to you and more um, like you made you made the drawing yourself. The same thing goes for texture. You can just find cool textures, take really good photos of wood, pavement, um, just rub some charcoal or Conte onto a piece of paper, scan it in, and you can apply the textures yourself, your own textures. Um, I remember when I used to try to use textures, I would, I would like read um, other people saying things like, um, just go outside and take some pictures of like grungy walls and, and pavements and, and stuff like that and you can use them yourself. But I thought like, oh, I don't need to do that. I can just use these ones I, f I found. But the same thing kind of goes for the brushes where if you make your own textures and your art really is truly your own art. And I used to never experiment with texture, but I've been doing that lately. I've been having a lot of fun with it. So I wanted to kind of share it because it's what I'm currently trying out in my art and I like to kind of share with you what I'm doing. So um, I've been playing with texture a little bit more. I think my favorite brush I like to use right now is the Noise Texture Brush. It's just really fun. Another thing 
um, that I pretty much say in every digital art video. Um, it's just people ask me a lot, kind of like how I how I paint or like how I like what my process is. So in each video where I give like my sort of tips, um, take them or leave them <laughs> for digital art, I like to kind of say what my process is. So basically, I just do the sketch. I color underneath the sketch. Um, sometimes I'll clean the sketch a little bit um, just to make it easier for myself. Um, I'll add some more shading. Like I'll try to make it as clean as I can sometimes um, before I move on to then making a new layer above everything and then painting over top of everything in that layer. And I make more layers as I go so I can kind of like go back and see what it used to look like and see if I've made it better or worse. And I'll just keep painting on top of it until I'm happy with it. And then I have I have the sketch buried underneath all those layers, um, so if I need to kind of go back in time, I can. I think a lot of artists do it this way, and I think it's a really good, a really good process. Some people merge all their layers together, but I kind of get paranoid uh, in case I'll, I'll make a mistake or something, so I like to kind of save all the previous layers. Another thing that I haven't really played that much with, um, except for in this video, is um, kind of like mixing traditional digital I see a lot of people do this on Instagram where they'll take um, a picture of a sketch they made and color it digitally, and that's a lot of fun to do. And you can do that um, like with anything. You can start digital, print it off, finish it traditionally, uh, vice versa, you can go back and forth. For this one, I took a picture of a gouache resist experiment thing that I posted on Instagram, but there are some parts of it that kind of bothered me a little bit, so I thought I would try to kind of fix them digitally while while making it still have that traditional look to it because that's that's kind of um, a, a good thing to use texture for if you want it to look traditional and you're actually painting on top of a of a traditional like of a scan of something you actually made on paper um, if you use like just like hard edge digital brushes it's not going to blend in with what you did before it'll kind of stand out too much so if you use like brushes that you made yourself from actual brush marks, it'll help it blend in to, uh, you can like edit the traditional drawing a little bit easier and it'll all blend together and there won't be like obvious digital painting on top of it. So I tried to use my gouache brushes for this and I applied a little noise texture at the end to kind of bring in that, that paper roughness that it had, that, that the original has. I wanted to preserve that texture while also being able to digitally paint over it. So I have a bunch of, of gouache brushes and my soft noise brush and I kind of um, added white, added gray, added black, tried to make the edges have that raw feeling to it. It's not perfect, but um, it was a, it was a good practice for me because I don't really do this that much. And like I said before, it's, it's really good to get a nice big high resolution scan of your brush um, because brushes increase and decrease in size. So if you have a really a really small scan of your brush and you make it really big, it's going to get blurry and you won't be able to see the texture that well. You might want that look, but you might not want that. So making really big brushes and um, it like you can always scale things down, but you can't make them bigger and preserve the quality unless it's a vector drawing, of course. My last tip for this, um, keeping with the whole brushes and texture um, theme of this, is find what works for you. Don't try to find what other people use because you want to have your own voice. You want your art to be unique to you. So if you try to do what other people use and try to follow their techniques, um, it might work, but it might not be what you would naturally do. Like it might not be the best choice for you personally as an artist. So I think it's really good to experiment. You can start with like trying to do what other people do just to get a sense of what kinds of things work, but I would really recommend just like experimenting yourself and seeing um, what kinds of things you can create just from your own your own brain. It's fun and you learn best that way, so I would recommend doing that for sure. Because I know uh, like a lot of people ask like, what brush did you use and what are your brush settings? And that's useful if you're just like learning about digital art, of course, because it's really overwhelming. There's so many different things to think about. And it took me a long time to like actually learn how to do digital art kind of properly, if I even do it properly. Like it took me a while to get comfortable with it. And I would always look for what other people did and try to do it. But if you're fairly comfortable with it, try to find your own 
brushes and your own ways of doing things because it just makes your art that much more original and it's a lot of fun too. I really hope you found this video interesting or got something from it. I just wanted to share what I'm currently thinking about right now, um, especially with digital art and I want to share some of the things I've learned and some tips for digital art because I really like talking about it and it's one of my favorite mediums and now that I know some good ways to kind of incorporate that traditional look into digital art. I'm really excited to kind of experiment experiment with that and see what I can do. So I hope you are excited too or you want to experiment now as well. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.